Thank you so much. Um, let's get started right away with questions. Okay. Are you seated? Are we good? Yeah. Do, do we start asking the questions or do they start asking the questions? I have a few questions. Um, hi, um, I'm Nada, I'm 15. Um, I you're watched... 15? Yeah. And you're so poised. <laughs> Thank you. Owen was not so poised at 15. <laughs> 17's where I really hit my groove. <laughs> um, I watched Wonder with my mom, who's here with me today, and we both really loved the support that you gave Augie as his mother. Um, you know, themes of fitting in, especially bullying, are universal. Um, how do you think the film will help all young people with um, the tools to deal with our own challenges? Well, I, you know, it's such a complicated topic, bullying, and certainly one, I have three children myself, and certainly one that we talk about. I think this novel was a great conversation piece for that as a family. And I mean, the one thing that I can truly, truly hope that I think is uh, attainable is just for anyone who's feeling picked on or bullied to have a voice to some adult, not to keep it to themselves. I think that is the first step towards solving it and sorting it and understanding it and being able to heal and move on from it is just, you know, talking to your parents or talking to a teacher, but some adult to help mediate the situation for you. Hi, my name is Tilda, I'm from Denmark. I wanted to hear if you ever yourself wanted to have a space helmet on and be invisible in any situations. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right about uh, now. <laughs> That's good. I think, um, oh, I think everybody, but, um, you know, that, that, right, if you had a superhuman power, I, I bet that being invisible is, uh, is right up there. But, um, yeah, kind of um, wanting to just sort of, I think that feeling that you have as a kid of wanting to sort of blend in and um, fit in is, um, you know, it seems to be pretty universal with kids unless you're, you know, a very strong um, person and uh, yeah and that kind of continues sometimes into being an adult. Uh, we have a question right here. Um, I'm JD and I just wanted to ask what's your favorite funny moment behind the scenes? You know that it's actually it wasn't really it didn't end up being behind the scenes because then we used it in the movie when I give uh, you know Julia gives me her manuscript and then I give her a present and then when she opens it, um, that was, you know, that was something from behind the scenes and, uh, but luckily you got to sort of see um, the reaction to it uh, there in the movie, but. Um, he wasn't supposed to give me a present yeah. in the scene. I was supposed to present present. him. But were you supposed to give me any present? No. You're no. just such a giver. Well, it was I just I just, you know, remember how excited I was that day? I got I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. It was pretty funny. Okay, discussion right here. Good morning, I'm Christy, and thank you for the amazing movie. And uh, the slogan and the hashtag of the movie is Choose Kind. So I would like to know, uh, both of you, can you recall a moment in your life when somebody, uh, somebody's kindness has made, uh, saved your day? And in the opposite, when your kindness have, has saved somebody's day? I think yesterday, that nice man whose birthday it was that came in and talked to us, he put a smile on our face for the rest of the day, and he told us such a sweet story. Yeah, about being in uh, school, and um, there was a classmate that had um, was had been in an accident, and um, been uh, and he slightly was new disfigured as a senior. And he, the guy, reached out to him um, twenty For, years later. Forty years later, forty I'll years just keep later. adding the true elements <laughs> <laughs> and saying that he. Um, you know, had always appreciated um, this guy's kindness to him, and it had always meant a lot to him. Because he was the only person that had been kind to him in the senior year. Yeah, 
Yeah. So 40 years later, he reached out to this man to say, it still means something to me to this day that that year you were the one person who was truly kind to me. I think we were all kind of in tears yeah. at the end of it. Yeah. It was so sweet. I think so. Yeah. Hi, I was wondering if you could elaborate a little bit about your relationship with the book, whether you'd read it before the movie was offered to you, to both of you. I hadn't read it. I, I didn't know about it, and I had um, gotten a, an email from, from Stephen uh, telling me about uh, the story that he was working on. So that was my um, introduction to Wonder, was just reading the script. and. Um, but you had actually been, um, you'd read the book, gotten the book, you'd read about it in the New York Times and then gotten the book to He's give it to He's listening to me kids. when I'm talking. Yeah. Keep going. And then <laughs> what happened? Got to your kids and then, you know, the way life gets hectic, uh, somehow it got put on a shelf and then a couple years later you see the book and you're like, oh, gosh, it this is that book, uh, but I don't quite remember it. Let me read it to make sure it's appropriate for the age uh, that uh, my kids are now. And then you read it over a weekend and just loved it and on Monday announced to the family that we're going to be, I think I've got a great new book for us to read as a family. And then... This is so read good. Read it out loud. You guys read it out loud? Yes, together, we did. Right? Mm -hmm. Not in one sitting. But, Not in uh, one. Yeah. No. Um, and, uh, and everybody, it was one of those ones that, you know, just generated a lot of dinner conversation because people would be like, well, I felt this way. And uh, this, He's absolutely, I'm yeah. thinking it and he's saying it. This yeah. is incredible. Yeah. Let's do this all day. <laughs> okay, keep going. And then what happened? And then you called your agent. You said, I, I don't know if... I'm sure something's already happening with this, or maybe it's already been made, but if it hasn't been, I would love to throw my hat in the ring because I, I'd love to play the mother. And um, then, um, yeah, and then the next thing uh, started to, you know, get rolling, right? That is 99.3% accurate. Ah, well hey, done, ah. Owen Wilson. <laughs> Hi, I'm Claudia, and I just wanted to ask, um, what would you say to someone who's like struggling at school and trying to fit in? Like, what advice would you give them? That's such a tough one because you you don't want to. Yeah, it, they're struggling, meaning they want to fit in, but they're having a hard time. Um, I mean, it's such a great thing what what uh, Isabel um, says in the movie. Um, so maybe you would. Uh, say some version of that. Um, it's it's hard to fit in when you're. How does it go exactly when you're born to stand out? Yeah, that Via says to Augie, it's it's impossible to blend in when you yeah. were born to stand out. But that's yeah. so hard to feel when you just feel right. like you know you're yeah. this big in a classroom of giants or whatever the feeling is. It's I so guess to hard. talk about your own, I would talk about. Well, first of all, you know that's a very you know, I feel the same way sometimes, just so the person um, knows just uh, how typical that is to feel that way. Uh, question right here. Yep. Hi, this is Christian from Germany. Good morning. Um, I mean, usually this question would be one of the more corny ones, but since the movie is called Wonder and it's about wonder, um, when did you experience wonder in your life? or Where, where did you find it? And also, I wanted to ask Julia, uh, when did you invent the family book reading practice? This is not an invention of mine. I cannot take credit for that. I mean, my dad read to us before bed every night, and, um, you know, I think it's it's just one of the great universal make up stories to cuddle times. Read I stories. think mainly read, like read books that we were ready for, but not yeah. necessarily ready to, as readers, take on. Um, and it was just a special, cozy time. So uh, it's just a nice way to head into dreamland, I think, with the sound of your parents' voice. Though my kids do say, Mom, just, just your normal voice, please. Don't do voices, OK? <laughs> just, do. just read it, um, which is really disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every day, I think every day, it, it's there for the recognizing 
for me, that's how I like to approach life. I know that my coworker here is far more uh, cynical. Cynical. <laughs> uh, question right here. Absolutely adored this film, and so much of it stayed with me. But one particular line was from you, Julia. It was where you said that what's inside is is where we're going and what's on our face is where we've been. Mm. I was wondering to each of you, what does that mean to you in your lives and in your career? Um, well, Owen's face, I think that the clock is ticking on the... <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Minutes. <laughs> oh, we should speed things 12. along. <laughs> um, no, I think it's true though and it's sweet and it's wonderful and, and I think all your life experience on your face ultimately, um, I think for both of us, shows a, a happy life. I think we're lucky people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's true. My mom worked with uh, the, the photographer Richard Avedon for 10 years on this In the American West project. And, and he said uh, to my mom about that people get the face they deserve. Uh, and uh, that could sound kind of chilling or sound really good, but, but I, what I thought that he meant is that, you know, that, that sometimes your personality just comes through on uh, with your expressions, the way that sometimes you're just drawn to a person just because you just sort of feel, God, that person just seems like really like, um, just kind of, um, there's just something, their energy seems really good. And vice versa, you know, if you're kind of a crank, you know, the the neighborhood <laughs> crank, those those faces tend to reflect that also, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Monica from London Mums Magazine. Uh, I would like to ask you, Julia, what advice would you give to parents in a similar situation with a really special child in that way? I would say there's a hundred other people with better advice probably for you than an actor from America. But, you know, I think all families are special and some that have these incredibly uh, focused um, people in their, in their family to take care of. I, I, I can't imagine what that's like. I mean, we've made our attempts and we have uh, created this story about it, but I think all families really do make attempts to do the best they can with what they know and just love each other as, as deeply as, as you can every day. And I think the one thing about the kind of crippling of the world today that is the positive I see in it is that you do, um, understand, uh, sadly, on a near daily basis, uh, how quick, quick as a wink, it can change. And just to hold a little tighter and love a little more loudly uh, in your family because the days are, um, are short. The night is long. <laughs> Justin, back here. Hi, um, you both play pretty cool parents in the film. I'm over here. Wait, who's calling us cool? Oh, here we go. Yeah. We're cool. You're, you're playing pretty cool parents in the film. I want to know, do you actually think you're cool parents in real life? And more importantly, do your kids think that you're cool in real yeah, life? Yes, see, they're two very different yeah. questions, aren't they? <laughs> right. Because I was going to say, we're incredibly cool parents. But I don't know if the five children yeah. we have between us would necessarily second that emotion. Yeah. It would depend on the day, maybe. It, that does seem to be part of being a kid is that, you know, growing up you have to at some point start to kind of roll your eyes a little bit at your parents. And uh, sadly with me, it's already begun at, um, you know, at age six, uh, I'm getting that. But um, I, think I'm, I think I'm a pretty cool parent. I have a question right here. Um, hi, I'm Arabella, and I have a question for both of you. So, what do you think about the key messages behind the movie? The key message? God, there's a lot I of think, good yeah, ones. I, I would hope that it would be, um, well, that people would be entertained and uh, the way I was when I read the script, and that was just moved by the story. 
and then also about um, you know just family as a source of um, strength for people in their lives and um, and obviously the um, the kind of uh, you know the you know kind of relying on people's uh, kindness and generosity of spirit um, and yeah. Well, he took all the answers, <laughs> which he, this is, we're not going to do anything like this again together, okay? Because, and I'll just say, this your is hair it. is fabulous. <laughs> oh, my word. Gorgeous. Well, fabulous. I not yeah, talking used to you, a good Owen. shampoo today. <laughs> I did feel like I was having a good hair day, but you embarrass me. Anyway, okay. Um, that's Thomas from German Radio. The um, film is much about giving the same attention to both children. Uh, how do you give the uh, same attention to your children? You have to be careful with that, obviously, uh, because I'm uh, the middle of three, and sometimes you do feel like your parents, um, you know, had favorites or have favorites. and uh, Because they do. Because they do, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually came across a note that my dad had written saying... Uh, Luke is my favorite there. I've said what the other two believe, but he's my favorite not for the reason they think he is. He's the favorite because he's always available to go do stuff, and the other two are off, have already sort of begun with their kind of friends and, you know, doing their own lives, and Luke was still around to like, oh, sure, I'll go down to the he office explained on it, Sunday. Though. Yeah, it was really nice, yeah. Uh, but I know it still hurts. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Hi, this is Patrick from Germany. Um, Julia, you seem to be sticking to a very strict one, one film a year rule. So how easy is it to find the one film that you want to do? And, and is it easy to say no to all the others? Uh, it is easy to say no. And it's, I mean, it just sort of falls into one a year, but it's not a, a mathematical equation that I'm trying to stick to. But fortunately, you know, I have found things here and there that um, that hold my heart enough to to want to participate in them. So that's my good fortune. Yeah. Uh, last question, right over here. Actually, this carries on probably quite well. Last question, no pressure. Oh it better be the best one. It's <laughs> a nightmare. I was just carrying on from that. How much of a fact now is the fact that you have children who are going to watch the projects that you do? How much does that factor into the choices and the decisions that both of you make? Are you thinking about the fact that? Well, you this will, yeah, um, I don't know that it factors into the decision, but when you, you know, work on a movie like this, this will be one that um, I'll be happy for my kids to see and, um, and go to. And, um, yeah, so it's definitely, uh, um, yeah, this one I'll be proud to have them go to. I think one finds that one's children aren't necessarily interested in one's filmography. <laughs> because perhaps what? one's children want to go see Cars 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they do want to see this because they loved the book. And like any lover of a great book, of course, you want to go see the movie. So yeah. this is a sure thing. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.